I think I found my most favorite smartphone ever. And with that, welcome to my unboxing and first impressions video of this phone, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. What I especially liked about unboxing the phone was the scope of deliveries. I have to say it's really nice to get a proper charger and, and also to get a case. Um, that's really a nice addition and this is what I liked about unboxing the phone. And also the presentation was quite good. Also the, how the photography kit was packaged. So all in all, apart from the damaged box, nice unboxing experience. And then I started using the phone and um, what I want to tell you is what are my first impressions about the build quality, about the hardware in general, but then also about the software experience with HyperOS, which is quite new, and they changed it from a MIUI. And also, if this big camera bump is worth it, and also my first impressions of the camera quality, so without further ado, let's head into my first impressions. And we are going to start with the build quality. And you cannot miss it, this is a quite substantial camera bump, right? It's very, very big. Um, but I have to say I like it because when you're holding the phone, everyone is saying this, but it's true, your index finger kind of rests underneath the camera bump and this gives some um, stability for the phone so I don't think it feels top heavy I don't um, have anxiety that the phone will fall off my hand also due to the leather bag right so I think this is quite nice I didn't know I liked I would like leather bags but I have it now with the Magic V2 and also with the Xiaomi 14 Ultra and it's quite nice. Um, it feels nice in the hand because it also gives you grip. Other than that, I think, yeah, the build quality is quite nice. So the sides are made out of aluminum. And I like this kind of gunmetal matte black look of the sides so they are not shiny. So also the sides will not attract fingerprints. Also the back will not attract fingerprints, but it definitely will age um, over time because it will attract oils and stuff like this. Um, but I have no problems with build quality to be honest. And then I heard a lot of questions regarding this, the rattle, and that's actually a good thing. That's the optical image stabilization. The lenses who have optical image stabilization are not fixed. They are kind of hold in place by a magnetic field that allows stabilization of um, the lens so perfectly normal don't worry your phone is not broken but unfortunately there's also one problem I have with this phone and first I thought I was not affected by it and the problem is condensation in in my case the main camera so basically when you shoot video for a long time and the phone gets warm and you do it outside when you have uh, lower temperatures and I tested it by placing the phone into the fridge and recording 8K30 for um, 8 to 10 minutes. Then the main lens started to show condensation. And um, I will show you some photos of this. And this is a quite common problem and um, a lot of people are reporting this in forums and on Reddit. And also the predecessors of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra were affected by condensation problems and nobody really knows what's the reason for this so if it's due to humidity um, while assembling the phone or if it's due to some glue or oils that evaporate when the phone gets hot and then condensate on the cold um, lens so i don't know in my case it's really minimal and um, most importantly it doesn't show on photos and videos. There are definitely worse cases um, outside and I saw photos and videos of users affected by it that showed that many, basically the whole lens fucked up and this of course leads to the inability to shoot photos and videos anymore. Um, the condensation will disappear very very quickly when you go to warmer temperatures. In my case it was like 15-20 seconds where the, the droplets you saw on the photo were disappearing. But this is definitely concerning. A workaround or a fix many users are now trying 
is to remove the SIM card tray, leave it out and uh, start recording video for one hour, two hours, loading the phone, do it again, do it again three times, most of them, um, so that the humidity is able to evaporate out of the phone. And then when you close it up, the IP rating um, and the ceiling should not allow any more humidity to enter the phone. Some of them were successful, some of them not. So I really need to keep an eye on it. Um, so I definitely will also try to do this and see if the minimal condensation I have on the main lens will disappear. But this is definitely something we all need to keep an eye on to see um, also how Xiaomi reacts to this problem. But now let's come to other topics. And the next topic is performance. And I have to say this is very fluid. It's buttery smooth. No problems with performance. I mean, the phone rocks the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor. Um, has 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can also extend the RAM by adding storage virtual to the RAM. So uh, no problems with performance. Apps open fast and scrolling is smooth. So um, very, very nice. I can say that the phone sometimes gets quite warm when you use it, for example, for some more intensive task, recording video, editing video, um, working a lot with the file system in Photos app and editing photos, it can get warm. Um, but until now it's nothing that is disturbing, um, but it definitely gets warmer quicker and also in general warmer than for example, Magic 6 Pro or the S24 Ultra. Then coming to the software, Hyper OS. And here I have to say it's a nice Android skin. I like it, but it has a quite steep learning curve because the settings are in a place where they're not in other phones. And also, of course, you need to learn how to work with Control Center and the folders and the home screen, stuff like this. So, it's, it's not the same as other Android skins, so you definitely need to uh, explore this phone a little more. Um, but then it's uh, quite nice and I, I, like, um, I like it. I especially like um, this. So the super wallpaper, so these animated wallpapers that are used when unlocking and locking the phone. This is such a nice idea and also it's a live wallpaper so when you unlock the phone there will also be a video and there are several of these super wallpapers and these are small things right but this leads to enjoyment every time i look at the phone and unlock it i, I enjoy the smooth animation um, and more of these super wallpapers are coming so i think that's quite great i also and this is the same with Honor and OnePlus, I like the, um, the option to have large folders. And when you long press the folder and go to edit, you even have the option to have several sizes. So, and you can choose between regular, enlarged and XXL. So this is nice, so even more customization options. And this gives the home screen a really nice look when you have uh, these enlarged folders and I normally place um, apps in the smart in the large folders where I need to have quick access so that's quite nice two things that drive me crazy the first one is when you swipe down and open the control center there is no shortcuts to go to settings like in every other Android phone where you can swipe down and go to settings at least I didn't found it but but here is no shortcut so I need to keep um, the settings app on the home screen to go into settings quite quickly. So this is frustrating. And another frustrating thing, and this is even more frustrating, is the way how you can add widgets. So either long press or, or pinch on the home screen. This will open um, the home screen customization options and in the middle you have widgets. And then you will first present it with all the Honor specific widgets and then you ask yourself, hey man, where are the normal Android widgets? And for that, you have to scroll down 
and I have to stand up because I can't see what I'm doing. You have to swipe down and then you need to go to apps with multiple widgets and then you click all and then you go right to the bottom where it says Android widgets and then you have your normal Android widgets and I cannot understand why but the list is not alphabetical so you can and you also cannot search for widgets so what you have to do is you really have to scroll through the whole list and you can imagine if you have a lot of apps with widgets this is a nightmare to always scroll through the entire list and look for the widgets you need to find I have absolutely no idea why you would implement adding widgets uh, in such a way and I really hope that this will be fixed in one of the next updates because it's such a pain to always go through all these steps to finally be able to add your widget to the home screen. Then HyperOS unfortunately comes with a lot of bloatware, third-party apps and also Xiaomi specific apps and some of them can be uninstalled, some of them cannot be uninstalled and the apps that are installed, for example the security app, are very feature rich but also at the same time very confusing so I don't know if I will ever use all these apps so the, the security apps also for example have a lot of options for cleaning the phone and stuff like this and I'm, I'm not sure if this is necessary anymore with modern Android so this could definitely be improved remove bloatware from a phone it doesn't do anything for your customers it makes the whole experience of setting up a new phone not enjoyable and then last but not least let's talk about the reason why we have this thing at the back the camera bump let's talk about the camera and I of course shot a lot of photos and videos so definitely will sprinkle some examples in while I speak um, and be careful there could be some recency bias involved because it's a new phone and I waited some time to receive it so recency bias is possible but I have to say I'm I need to be careful I, I, I would say it I'm really blown away by the quality of the camera I saw a lot of reviews and this phone of course got a lot of hype after the presentation and then the reviews I saw were kind of mixed. There were a lot of comparison videos that compared it against the S24 Ultra, the Magic 6 Pro, the Vivo 100 and all the other premium flagship phones with good cameras. And some videos just said it's overhyped, the quality of the cameras is not so, um, so great and um, it doesn't deliver. And I don't agree. So, I think the photos and also the videos are exceptional coming out of this phone. And the reason why I'm saying that is that the photos have, most of the times, a very natural look. Meaning, skin tones are good, um, they are not over-processed and not over-sharpened. Also, implementation of HDR is really good. You still have shadows and highlights and dynamic range in the image and this is not killed by implementing HDR. And also the consistency between all the lenses is very good. You don't notice big shifts in color and exposure when using the wide and the ultra wide and the tele and this really allows to capture a scene with multiple focal lengths and don't get thrown off by completely different colors and stuff like this so i think this is good and i think it can even get better when this phone will receive the first updates and uh, xiaomi implements together with leica hopefully some fine tuning but Right from the start and out of the box, um, this is really great. I noticed that sometimes the photos don't really look neutral. 
So you look at the photo and say, hey, was there some color grading involved? But in the end, when you then start to examine the photo, you see that the skin tones are correct and also the skin tones are pleasant and that in general the photo is very pleasant. And in the end, that's the characteristic, right? Even when you use a Fujifilm or a Canon or a Sony, all, every camera manufacturer has their own way of interpreting colors and use color science, right? And I think this is also what you see um, in the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. They don't try to produce a very natural image or neutral image, but they try to produce a Leica-like image. And these are also the reasons why they have Leica Vibrant and Leica Natural. And you see this in the images. And I think that's a good thing. And if you don't want this, I have to uh, still test it um, um, uh, more, but you can also use other color profiles, I think. But you have this Leica look embedded in the images, which is, for me at least, a very good look, but can be completely different when you compare it against the S24 Ultra or the Magic 6 Pro, because they're using another color science, right? So, um, and if neutrality is an uh, important factor for you, then perhaps that's not the right phone for you. And then let's talk about the camera app, and I think the camera app is fantastic. Especially because it provides so many features and options. So you basically can set up the camera and the phone like you wanted to. It has so many good features. For example, it provides focus peaking, it provides zebras for exposure verification. You can shoot lock, you can use um, LUTs, for example, when you're shooting. And um, I think the camera app is really f fantastic. Also, portrait mode where you can not. Uh, choose 1x, 2x, but you, um, you will present it with the um, exact focal length. This is great and I really enjoy um, shooting with the camera app, but also this has a steep learning curve, so you definitely need some time to get the hang of it and really uh, deep dive into all the features. And then sometimes there are features you don't quite understand and you don't know what they are doing. Um, so there, you need some research, but I can promise you, if you take the time and learn about all the features and options of the native camera app, then you will be able to shoot much better photos and videos because then you can really get the most out of this camera system and also you don't have to rely as heavily on um, the auto mode of this camera. But not only photos look nice, also the videos I took so far were really promising and I like both the video mode and also the movie mode. The movie mode then tries to um, blur the background. Both look nice. I like the colors, I like sharpness and I will also uh, provide you with a short montage I provided with some of the shots I took yesterday. So video is great and you also have a lot of options when shooting video. So um, yeah, this will really take some time to explore everything. And that's it. I think this again became a very long video. Sorry for that, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or if you have any comments or ideas um, for videos or for things I need to test and show, then just leave me a comment. I would be more than happy to welcome you in one of my upcoming videos. Until then, take care and bye.